Well, uh, greetings, fellow mammals. Uh, it is uh, another memo chat cast here, and I'm with uh, Dr. Thomas Caracolis. I myself am Flake Martin, and uh, it, we're 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 bringing it. We're keeping it real. <laughs> uh, one thing, just for us getting better at this, as, as we learn and we go forward, maybe we shouldn't tell a joke right before <laughs> we start one of these, so that we don't. Like the video doesn't start with us just laughing for no reason. I, I like laughing for no reason. So oh, okay. So, anyways, uh, last week uh, we recorded this awesome session, and the sound was didn't work. And uh, thanks to Ethan for noticing. Man, you, mm -hmm. you're 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 helping us out, Ethan. We appreciate it. So, I wanted to re-record that session because it was uh, I think it was important, and want to get that up for the folks. We we um, we the the idea was um, to look at uh, how physical activity impacts um, mental health. And um, I think particularly in this pandemic time, um, people may be having uh, experiences in terms of their mental health that they've never had before. And so it's important for us to talk about that, first of all, to get it in the open. And I think second of all, to just kind of, you know, have people be aware of it so that maybe if they're experiencing things, uh, they can uh, do something about it. And three, then to talk, talk about the importance of activity. So, uh, Thomas. Um, I know that you've uh, you've collaborated on a paper with a, a colleague, and um, uh, what do you have to say? Just talk talk, talk us yeah, into this yeah. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So I I've got the paper up here. Um, it was a briefing note that we wrote, but just to, I guess in broader context, I think this is interesting for myself, and I don't want to speak for you either, Blake. But um, I, I think I might speak for both of us on this in that. Um, I definitely use physical activity as a way of regulating my mental health or, or improving or maintaining yeah, yeah. my mental health. Absolutely. And I, yeah, yeah and I, I figured you did as well. And so during the pandemic, when our physical activity schedules have changed, and um, I think I, I, I'm doing the best I can to maintain a certain level of physical activity. Right. I think you're doing a good job. We, we, we talked about, we pushed some of these chats to after runs, for example, yeah. that we both prioritize. Um, so I just, when you can't do it, and there are circumstances that have come up during this pandemic where we, I haven't been as active as I'd like to be, or I think I need to be. Yeah. Um, I've really learned how that negatively affects my mental health. Yeah. Not to the point where I, I wouldn't suggest I'm experiencing depression or anything like that, but um, definitely not, not where I want to be mentally. Right. And so uh, early on, this was kind of identified as an issue. Um, one of our, our, our colleagues and, and a co-author of mine on some work, uh, Dr. Len Goodman, he, uh, he brought this issue up and, and he wrote a little bit about it. So um, I know originally when we did this, I read some of the quotes um, about how mental health actually can be used um, uh, to to improve, or sorry, physical activity can be used to improve mental health. So right. uh, one of the things I remember reading is uh, he, he goes on about physical activity. This is this is what he's writing about. In addition to preventing a multitude of chronic diseases and re reducing premature mortality, regular exercise has been linked to reduce levels of stress, improved mental health, cognition, and better quality of life. And he, he cites that. Yeah. Um, he also says habitually performed exercise has been shown to reduce anxiety and depression and improve psychological well-being. And again, he has some references littered throughout that statement as well. So uh, it's not my area of expertise, and I don't want to come across as an expert in this area, but right. um, it does seem like there's quite a bit of literature to support this idea. Yeah, and, and I would also say that I'm not um, an expert in this area, but I have been a science communicator in this area. Um, particularly um, at yoga shows um, in Toronto mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. So again, we're, we're not experts, but this is a thing that we've uh, investigated in some ways with secondary research, uh, looking at what others have written about it. Um, so I, I wanted to take a second too and just kind of talk about just very quickly about depression, just for those who wonder, hey, am, am I depressed right now? Like I, I've been feeling low for a long time. And mm -hmm. and I, I think it's important to just kind of lay it out quickly. But the first thing is that 
for sadness and sadness is normal and it's part of our, our experience as humans, but it, it's transient, it's short term, and there's typically a clear cause, you know, like uh, a, a pet dying or uh, losing a relationship that was important to you or, or, or even um, just kind of losing your job or not being able to go out with friends. Those things have a clear cause, but trans it's transient and short term. Those are important things. And then depression it's persistent. You'll be feeling it for most of the day. Um, it has a longer duration, often up to two weeks or longer. Um, you don't always know the cause. Like, so you'll go, ah, I've just been feeling like I've been in a funk for a while. Um, there might be weight gain or loss and you might have insomnia or in fact, or hypersomnia where you, you don't feel tired at all. And there will be feelings of uh, shame often or worthlessness like you'll be saying oh I should get to this or I and you'd just be down on yourself really hard and uh, loss of interest and pleasure uh, interest or pleasure in things that you used to really enjoy and you may have very dark or suicidal thoughts and difficulty thinking and so I think it's important to just kind of bring out what depression can be and and you shouldn't diagnose yourself based on this list of no. uh, symptoms you should talk with a medical professional or a healthcare professional who can help you sort that out but it is important to know that those things um they are amenable um to exercise exercise can can be involved in getting them better with some very important things and you're gonna i have a Before. feeling you're gonna jump in here yeah, just because I, I know where you're going with this, and I'm actually really interested to hear because I um I know there there's some really physiological or chemical reasons why yeah. exercise yeah. actually benefits, and I want to hear them all, but I just want to pick at a, a point that you made because um it just kind of occurred to me. So one of the definitions or part of the definition of depression that you use was there's no like particular cause yeah. or it, it, you can't often point to an event. Um, like you said, yeah, frequently, like, so like your dog dying yeah. and you're sad after that's obviously not depression, but um, how does that work in this new normal that we live in yeah. where COVID is kind of a persistent thing that's existed in our lives for over a year now and, and continues to exist and, and seems to be, um pers like persistent for the foreseeable future at least yeah is, is that depression or are we just sad that our old lives are gone yeah that's a that's a, that's a, i don't expect you to have an answer I'm just, that's an just amazing kind of a, question there and and i yeah. i wish i had an a, a, an answer and i i think i almost wonder like if we're getting into in some ways we're kind of moving into a post-traumatic stress disorder that there's been a trauma that we've suffered societally where we're, we're wrestling through it and now we're we're dealing with the the outcomes of that stress we're we're looking at the aftermath of that um so and and major depressive disorder mdd and post-traumatic stress disorder they're very different and even there's so many varieties of major um, uh, uh, depressive disorder, like it doesn't just come in one, you know, one species, it comes in a whole bunch. So it would be hard. So I don't know. I, I think I, I would love if a healthcare professional would see this yeah. and correct us. That would be amazing. Yeah, that would, would love be that. great to have a comment or something about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, to focus it back in. So physiologically, how does uh, activity or exercise um, help us well, deal with mental health in general. So, so in negative mental states, there's a few things that we should know. There's this stuff called uh, brain derived neurotrophic factor. It's BDNF. It's this chemical that makes your neurons grow and make connections with adjacent neurons. And 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 actually, there's all these ways. Uh, little it, your neurons reach out to other neurons, and uh, BDNF goes down. Uh, when you have depression or, or you're in a depressed state, um, same thing if you've uh, suffered a concussion, actually. Um, there's this stuff called um, serotonin, and it's like in in the absence of serotonin, you feel sad. But um, with, if you have some serotonin, you typically will feel happier. You, you won't feel sad. Uh, dopamine, which is like this reward juice, it's like this chemical that when you get excited about something... Uh, it, it, this uh, that chemical is present, and um, noradrenaline and norepinephrine, uh, they're they're chemicals that kind of get you ready for stuff, and they all go down. Um, and then there's this stuff called uh, uh, CRF, corticotropin releasing factor, 
And that stuff is basically, it's uh, a brain chemical that um, is released that causes you to feel bad. And you may think, oh, that's a terrible thing. Why would we have such a chemical in our brain? But we need to feel bad sometimes. We need to feel bad about about um, about uh, having harmed someone or about having done something wrong that may impact our future and future planning. Like if you ruined your whole crop for a year and your food is gone, uh, you should feel bad about that. Um, it's good to feel bad sometimes, but feeling bad all the time is, is awful. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and for, if you've ever suffered from a, a bout of depressive disorder, um, you, f you just feel bad all the time. So it's, it is good to feel bad a little bit for, for clear reasons, but not all the time. So all those chemicals are affected by depression and even negative, um, uh, mental states, they bring them down a little bit, all of them, uh, except for the CRF, which comes up a little bit. And, um, yeah. So the thing is, is, is when we do activity, different kinds of activity have impacts on these different chemicals and mm -hmm. um, uh, Tai Chi and yoga and walking, walking on a treadmill, walking in the forest. And they, they have different impacts on these uh, chemicals, depending on what you do and for how long you do them. And so just from doing the activity, it can change the brain chemistry positively. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, so go ahead. Um, yeah, it just so this brings me to the the next point. I think that I I wanted to highlight off of what Len has written, and um, I'll give you some context after I read this. But um, reading directly, he says studies suggest that engaging in regular endurance exercise has similar effects to antidepressive medications, or may improve symptoms when combined with antidepressive medications. And so the first caveat. Uh, when reading that statement is um, I don't think Len is suggesting and we're definitely not suggesting that exercise can be a replacement um, if you yeah. if you're clinically diagnosed with a condition um, and you are on antidepressant medications um, th there's literature and evidence to support that they're effective um, next caveat is Len specifically mentions endurance exercise I think that's a bias I would suggest that he has <laughs> Because just yeah. to give background to anyone watching this, uh, a lot of you probably don't know who Len Goodman is, but he is on the Canadian National Senior Men's Triathlon Team or Ironman Team. So he's heavily biased towards he, endurance he, exercise. He, and he, endurance will bury, exercise. he will bury all of us. <laughs> all of us. All of us. If you go for a run or a bike ride with him or a swim, yeah. he will bury you. Yeah. But um, so the point I was... I, I'm, trying to get at and the question I kind of want to ask you is is that is that is that kind of what you were explaining is that true like do the medications for antidepressives do they do they try and change these um chemical levels in your in your brain or your body or is it are there different mechanisms that are being used between the two uh, types of treatments let's call yeah them. so there's different classes of of medications and i'm this is not my area of expertise at all but important to say that um as you said don't if you've been prescribed medications don't just kind of say oh i'm going to stop i'm going to do exercise but mm -hmm. there's been some studies done um in in folks with um yoga and and that 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 I'm aware of, um, and I'm sure with uh, long distance running as well, but where um, there have been changes in brain chemicals, like, the, okay, so for there's one brain chemical called GABA, and GABA is a, uh, it's an anti-anxiety brain chemical. When you have a release of it in your brain, you feel less anxiety, um, and it can be used, mm -hmm. um, it can be used uh, pharmacologically to reduce um anxiety, but it can also be used to reduce um, uh, seizures. And uh, so, but when you do certain kinds of exercise, your brain releases GABA. And they've done some control studies where they've done it with, um, where they've looked at the increase in certain brain chemicals in combination with, um, with uh, uh, pharma, ph pharmaceuticals. And they've noticed that um, there, there is an overall improvement when people do exercise as well. Like there are for some of the brain chemicals, there's overall mm -hmm. improvements as well. Um, so they're synergistic rather than like antagonistic. Yeah, is, that's, is that's, that's correct. Just to me that's at correct. least. Okay, yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, and um, 
yeah so the, the one study that I was thinking of they were they did the antidepressants but they also did yoga in a group so one of the things about exercise that in a normal time is that you do exercise a lot of time with others so there's this mm -hmm. whole other thing about doing exercise with people that uh, benefits you in ways that exercise uh, without people like just alone um, you're not going to get all of some of those benefits but you will get other benefits so but also with that thing that i was saying about uh gaba the, that chemical is uh in a study they looked at a baseline like where are you normally with that chemical and where were you at the end of a 12-week period of doing the exercise over and over again and they found that um people's baseline uh only increased after each session but it didn't increase over the whole 12 week period. So, so, you know, that might lead some people to say, well, I have to go and I have to do this thing over and over again. I have to do it every day. And, and therefore it doesn't work. The exercise isn't working because I have to do it every day. But that's like saying, you know, well, uh, you know, I just ate this apple you know, four hours ago and now I'm hungry again. So clearly the apple didn't work. It's not benefiting me at all. But the bottom line is, is that for some of these chemicals that are furnished by food or by exercise, you know, we've got to keep going to, we got to go back to the well all the time to keep doing it. So you talked about regular and consistent exercise. Yeah. So there's that kind of, it boosts you up and it boosts you up and it boosts you up over and over again. And, and I like, go on. I, I like the way I think you tied this in and this is kind of how we ended it the last time. So this is probably the last thing that point that I make is that we're getting back to that idea of like, it's almost like a hygiene type thing. Cause you, so you said eat an apple being hungry. And I think the last time we did this, I was like, or it's like you brushed your teeth one day. Yeah. So you don't need to brush your teeth again the next day. No, that's not, not how it works at all. Um, so yeah, these things should be done habitually um, and regularly so that, they they actually do work for us yes and right at the very top of the chat thomas you said something important you said it as a preventative and or in medicine it's called a prophylactic yeah where where you you do this thing uh because it's going to keep away something else uh, mm -hmm. um and um it's going to prevent uh some some bad effect and so um, I actually, I keep track of, of um, what my heart rate variability is and, or I'll even keep track of what stressful events I have coming up. And I, I have suffered from depression in the past and I likely will again, if, if just the way chemistry is and the way my body is and, and the way my life is. Um, mm -hmm. But um I know that when I'm coming up on stressful events or, or challenging times in my life, I know that if I thoughtfully, not over-exercise, not go crazy and completely deplete myself, but if I exercise thoughtfully and, and have fun at it, um, that I notice these fantastic benefits that um, act as a prophylactic against the, the negative feelings that I may otherwise have. And so I'll just kind of set up in my mind, I'll say, okay, Blake, this is a day where you really need to get out. You need to hit your bike or mm -hmm. you need to go for a run. It's going to really make your mood better two days down the road. And so I prepare myself. And, and I, I know that when you've got things coming up too, that you also do a similar mm -hmm. thing that you'll, you'll, you'll kind of look down the road. And yeah, and I think that's that's one of our future chats that we're going to talk about, kind of the psychology of exercise and how some people develop this either like inherent knowledge or or learned ability to to use exercise as a tool for them. For yeah, sure. yeah. Mm -hmm. But we, we, we those are smart a little, people. A little bit more background reading on that because I don't think <laughs> either of us are prepared to no, speak to that I, right I, now at the moment. I, I have no idea. But we're, we're going to though. Yeah, well, we're going we'll to do that in a future week. We'll be, yeah, we'll be smarter one day. Exactly. All right. Thanks, Blake. Thank you, Thomas. That was a great chat. Talk to you later. Yep. Bye. There we go.